this is where this gentleman was having trouble. He's having a hard time holding on. Well, if you're following the hybrid money management, remember, as I said earlier, longer term trend following, your drawdowns are going to be abysmal, as will be your accuracy. Now, if you're in the right place at the right time, you'll print money like a 1999 or again, as I beat the dead horse, not to take anything away from the turtles, but the turtles were in the right place and the right time. And I don't know, I'm sure there's a couple that did well since, but for the most part, it sort of ended badly for the turtles. And their program could have actually blown up about halfway through because they didn't properly adjust for the volatility of the market with their leverage and what are their one of the turtles noodled around with, with the numbers and stuff and brought it to Eckert and Dennis and said, we're risking way too much here. We're on the verge of a blow up. So they could have blown up during the process, but not to take anything away from it. What they did was nothing short of miraculous. What's interesting there though, they all had the same information. They all had the same system. And some did incredibly well by following the system and others did not, even back in the program when all the commodities were trending back in the day. Anyway, so you want to follow the hybrid money management system so you get short-term profits, put that in your pocket, and then ride the trend for hopefully, I don't know, just said hope, but hopefully a long, long time. And it's one way to have you cake and eat it too. So just real quick, we're looking for mostly pullback patterns in nature. So you want a strong trend, you want a correction to where that correction is deep enough to have shaken some people out, but not extremely deep to where it looks like a modified reversal. We use an entry and only get in if and only if the market rallies up to our entry. As I said a thousand times, I've had people criticize my stock picks six months later, and I'll go back and look and like, I don't think I recommended that stock because it's going straight down, but I did recommend it six months ago and it never triggered. So waiting for an entry can keep you out of a lot of trouble. And again, there's a million little things as I've been preaching and waiting for an entry, I think I covered as, as one of those million little things and that in and of itself keep you out of a lot of trouble. So you start putting together this little piece after piece after piece after piece. And before you know it, not overnight, but over time you become successful. So we take profits at the initial profit target. Now, when we we're first in a position, for the most part, we kind of stair step that stop higher for the most part. Now I'm a little bit more lenient in more recent years on that initial trailing stop. But for the most part, it's a one for one basis. So if the stock goes up a point, we bring up the stop. If the stock goes up one point, we bring the stop up one point. And then once we take those partial profits, we bring that stop up to break even. And that's that's the only thing that's done intraday. Everything else is done after the close, okay? Anyway, if the trend continues, then we gradually widen the stop out. So here's where we turn into that longer term trend follower because that's where the real money is. The swing trading is great, don't get me wrong, but I, I now believe over the last 10, 15 years at least, that pure short-term trading, maybe even longer than that, pure short-term trading doesn't really work. And maybe somebody could prove me wrong, but if, you, if you're a pure swing trader, you're still gonna get whacked every now and then because bad things can happen. And you're not getting the full upside of a potential trend that lasts for a couple of years. So just my two cents on that. But have that money management plan in place People ask me, as I've said a thousand times, is my money management plan psychological or statistical? And my answer is yes. You're feeling that, uh, not to go all fresh with psychology on you, but you're kind of lower, you know, Maslow's, uh, what is it, hierarchy of needs. It's like Wi Fi and then food and shelter, you know, and all the other ones. <laughs> so you're kind of fulfilling that uh, the shorter term needs by taking the, the, profits and we live in this microwave society where we're looking for instant gratification on everything we can't nobody has patience anymore and that short-term profit does that it also taking the short-term profit it also just in case the mood the, the bigger picture move does not materialize a lot of times on noise alone you'll make a little money on the trade and if you could 
make 1% scratch out, make 1% scratch out. So you're making 1% overall on those, on the least on those trades that are hitting the IPT. That kind of helps to keep the lights on. Now your real money is going to be in those longer term trends, which sometimes seems like they're few and far between, but they do happen and they happen just enough to make it all worthwhile. So I don't want to make it sound like it's easy or anything like that. Now, one thing you have to wrap your head around, George Carlin once said, when you buy a pet, it's going to be badly. And as I said, a few weeks ago, we had, we were at uh, an emergency vet at 2 a.m. And uh, it's, you know, it ended badly, believe me. And it's, it's, it's a bummer. And it was, it was more of a bummer than I ever realized. I've had dogs my whole life. But this dog was really part of a family. And I guess being empty nesters, she was, you know, like our third daughter in the house. But anyway, so my corollary to George Carlin is when you make a trade, it's going to end badly. Now, technically, you could be using some kind of reversion to the mean trade where you get 100% out of it or some kind of complex option strategy to where your goal would be a certain amount of money and you can't make any more more money on the position after that. And I've used to work years and years ago with the, with the hedge fund that did options and I would sometimes noodle with the spreadsheet on the positions, not that I was an option expert, but I would do it with a spreadsheet. And I would say, you know, we we have very little more money we can make on these positions and we have unlimited risk. Maybe we need to shut down these positions and take, you know, just be happy with what we have. That's a different kind of trading than the trend trading where all the trades eventually end badly. And I would say most trades eventually end badly in the end, you're going to give up some of those open profits. And it's just something that you have to learn how to deal with. So I took these winners from earlier. And again, if you wanna know a lot more about these setups, go back a couple of weeks and a week of charts. I think it was last, the end of July. But those are the parameters down there and we made 1275 overall. Now this is something I thought we'd be in for a long, long time. Unfortunately, we got stopped out. It's better than poking the eye. But if you're focusing on from that top tick down, you actually gave up 1275 on this position. But overall, you made $1,275, okay? But if you're focused on what you gave up, which I think this gentleman might be doing a little bit, that's creating some of this animosity or stress in the markets. Then it's a lot harder. Now, as I've often said with clients, when they complained about what they gave up in the end, I said, I said well, send me, send me 90% of what you made on the entire trade to keep temper, sit out and go get your massage and just try to forget about the trade. Nobody sent me the money from the trades yet, but I'm still waiting. All right, KNF was a 42.91 trade overall from the entry to where we stopped out. And that's the ultimate goal. And you can see we made a thousand in the first loaf or 15%, and then we made 32.91 on the second loaf, which was 50%, and that's where the real money is. And yeah, it's one hell of a drawdown in the end, so in the end, we gave up 24.63. Now, I don't have it tonight, but if you go in and look at a lot of positions, especially those ones we held for years, you have these abysmal drawdowns. Maybe that NASDAQ, let's say the Q position goes on, let's say the Q's going to make new highs, and well beyond, then that $8,000 mental drawdown, okay, because it's, uh, or paper drawdown, I mean, it's, it's real money, and in your head, it's real money, but technically, when you're following the system, it's still on, and just see what happens. But if you go in and look at the cues, and go in and look at a lot of the positions, again, from the archives, you'll see that they had some pretty ugly and abysmal drawdowns in between, especially once you shift gears to that longer term trend following. Now, you're only on with half of your position size, but keep in mind that as that position grows, that becomes a bigger and bigger part of your account and the drawdowns become bigger and bigger. It comes with the territory. It's just something you have to live with it. Trading's like life. It's making decisions and then living with those decisions. The making decisions is pretty easy. It's the living with them that is not. I'll have to make a joke about wife's expense on that. I'll save it for later. 
So here's the SM, SVM, and you can see overall we made 1,077. That's one of those better than focus the eye trades. We got the IPT, and then we scratched out in the remainder. But if you were to measure that from the high down, and this is one thing I'd recommend you you not do too much of, is watch a screen, especially if you are position trading. Watch a screen if you're doing a little discretion on that, around a stop or around IPT or something. But other than those times, for the most part, just let things unfold and let the chips fall where they may. So again, did you make 1,077? Yes. Did you lose 1,276? Eh, you lost it at open profit, but overall, you still made over a thousand bucks on a 100K account. So that's better than poking the eye, right? Now here's the NNE. And we did, we made $5,000 in this trade. So that's 5% on a 100K account, right? 127% in change. But and now this one's a big ouch, okay? So this is what I'll concede. This would hurt. This would hurt badly, uh, really bad, I should say, because this, I had this in more than one account. And the smallest position that I had in this was right here, 600. Uh, I think it was, I forget how many shares I had. I had the actual trade somewhere um in one of these presentations but anyway i had at least 600 shares on and i had that was the smallest position i had so i had a lot more in other accounts and so this would really hurt uh in my defense it didn't have options that i was trying to especially the model account I was trying to follow the system best i could to try to create the same thing that i'm showing you uh in hindsight i probably should have lightened up a little bit if this would have had options i definitely would have lightened up a little bit and I would have frittered away some of that money and bought some crazy out of the money options. Um, I guess I got a little greedy. I probably should have should have uh, backed off a little bit when you have such tremendous gains. I think this was uh, like $3,000 per 100 shares. <laughs> the day I got stopped out of it, the day, the day I didn't take the profit, that night, my wife's check engine light goes on in a German car. So it's like, oh, boy, <laughs> after just dumping a tremendous amount of money in it. So um, next time, I will I will lighten up a little bit in, in case that check engine light comes on. Anyway, 